Hi everybody. Um, today I would like to do a homework review on the four uh, column buckling problems. Wanted to kind of go step by step and use references um, and to help develop assistance in uh, solving the problems. Um, so let's get started. Okay. We'll go with dark gray. So first right here, what I've done is I've actually screenshot the exact information that appears on the FE um, manual. And so we, what I want everybody to know and understand is that if you look at this and you look at the problem, you should be able to solve for it. And as discussed previously, if we look at the formula for column buckling, at the end of the day, we're only struggling to understand what the term K, which is your effective length factor. Everything else is either given or could be solved. For example, pi squared is 3.14, right? And I don't know if you guys can hear some little noise in the background. Apologize. Anyways, pi is 3.14, right? We all kind of know that from earlier discussions of when you guys were uh, maybe in um, high school or maybe even before that. E is young modulus. For the most part, it's going to be given to you. If not, you go look it up. But it's nothing that you solve for, right? Um, at least within the realm of these problems. And moment inertia, again, it's either something that's given or something that you solve for, right? Which is this. And again, for the most part, it's going to be a table lookup within the realm of an FE exam, they're not going to ask you to solve for the moment inertia um, using, say, parallel axis term. It has to be, if they ask you to do it, it's got to be very straightforward, right? Like a rectangle or a circle or something like that. And we have problems that will represent that. But within a two minutes standpoint, I, I just don't see it. You know, I feel like it. I've never, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've taken an FE, but I um, if they were going to ask, I would say that they're really going to be focusing on that just because that's really what this uh, this area is focused on, right? Okay, so let's go to the problem solving, guys. All right, so we got a W8 by 67. Just for reference, um, and uh, W8 refers to wide flange. So the wide flange typically looks like this. This is for your own education. Um, when I say W8... That eight typically means the depth of approximately eight inches, okay? The 67, for your reference, means that if this thing was a foot in length, right? This actually was drawn a little wrong, but let's just say that this was 12 inches. If you put it on a scale and you were to weigh it, the scale, would show 67 pounds because it's 67 pounds per foot, okay? A36 refers to the type of steel and the yield for that is 36 KSI, okay? Um, so it's saying that the column can be developed to uh, assume this fixed and pin base to the top determine the largest action force P that can be applied without causing a buckling, right? So, okay, so here's the thing. Where we're going to focus on is key words. Can be assumed fixed at space and pinned at the top. Honestly, within uh, something uh, of a problem like this, right, even if you did like fixed at the top, pinned at the base, for a problem like this, something very simple, it actually won't change your answer. Okay? Anyways, so here that automatically tells us that we need to go and look for the K. So K is then equal to, they said fixed and pin, right? Fixed and pin, which is 0 0.7. Okay, great. So what that means is I go ahead and do 0 0.7. Okay. Now I'm going to see if it's asking for stress or load. It says determine the force, not stress, but force. So that tells me that this is a force. This is a stress, 
right? And that's really the only difference between the two formulas. So this one, um, I'm just going to start writing out P critical is equal to pi squared E I over K L squared. Okay. So let's fill in what we do know, right? Now, 3.14. Squared E is 29,000 KSI for steel. Sorry, guys, I just kind of know that from memory. I, so here's the interesting you have a choice of IX and IY, but because the, um, the, the bracing along doesn't really is the same between the X axis and the Y axis, right? We naturally go for the lower moment in inertia right now. You could solve for with a higher moment inertia, but in this problem, um, it wouldn't govern, right? So I'm not going to even bother, right? That's that's really for a, a different video discussion um, that I have lined up also. So uh, with that, I, I'm going to choose a lower moment of inertia. And if you really insist on challenging that, go ahead and solve for with respect to the other one, and you'll see why. Okay. K is 0 0.7, right? It's within the parentheses, right? And the L is given right there, which is 25 feet. Now, you've got to watch out for units, right? So it's 25 feet times 12 to get it in inches. Uh, the reason for it, everything else is in inches, right? So if we check it, inch, inch, and so naturally this wants to be also an inch, or you could do it in feet, but it's normal to do it in inch. All right, so if we plug that all into in together, right, it's going to come out to be, oh, just forgot the square right there, 575 kips. Now, it doesn't just end there, right, because you need to also check against what the maximum um, is. So as discussed in lecture, just to, in a future problem, I won't really go over this, but I'm just going to describe right here. Now the order of buckling formula. All right, so if we were to graph the Euler buckling curve, right, um, and say this was kind of the sigma, and this is kind of your KL effective, right? Pretty much the shorter the column, the higher the capacity, right? And so this, let's just say that this is the Euler curve. And, and so, obviously, what you can't do is say that the capacity is infinite, right? So at some point, you've got to be able to say, hey, you know what? You can't go past this line. That line is the yielding of the steel. So that, that creates the cap, right, of that. So if your value came out to be around here, right, you'd be limited by this cap down here. So then let's go ahead and take a look to see if this is that is a case for this one. Um, which is a bummer because um, you actually need to know the area of this thing. And so the area, you can actually get it from the 67 and calculate based on like the density of the steel and everything like that. That's one way of doing it. Um, the other one's looking at uh, tables provided, which I, I don't know exactly where you would find it unless you have the steel table. But um, the alternate would be to actually calculate this using the sigma critical, right? <clears throat> so I would um, challenge you to actually use a stress critical to solve for it <clears throat> if you don't have the area. So that's the advantage of doing it uh, using that formula. But I'm going to cheat right now. Um, and say that the area is equal to 19.7 inch squared. So what that means is that the yielding, I would say P yield, is equal to 36 KSI multiplied by 19.7 inch squared. And again, you could still do this without the 19.7. So I don't want people complaining, saying, 
oh, I don't have an area. I can't solve it. No, well, you could go solve for the stress and you could still find the answer. So it's just not as fast, right? And so when we do that, what is that equal to is a question. I'm getting my calculator out, so 36. So that's 709. What that means, if we're to kind of draw this and we say that, hey, we know what the area is and this is like force instead, right? Because you, the, the constant is the area, right? Well, what we're saying that right here, that's 709, which is the maximum that it can do it. And this uh, 575 is somewhere down here, right? And so it's not exceeding that 709 cap. So our answer for this one is blue is good. 575 kips is your answer. Okay. And um, some will uh, refer to as PA, which is your allowable or P critical in this case is equal to 575 kips. And that's your answer for this question. All right. Oops.